So the Blades and Beaten run in the championship is over after defeat at Middlesbrough. Rob Kozluk's been watching the game alongside me. Frustration is the word really, isn't it, after that? Yeah, disappointing in the end. We spoke about if they could actually get their next goal and ask Middlesbrough questions, but it never come to it. The experience that Neil brought into the side shot in the end. That being said, it was a, a bright start to the second half. David McGoldrick came on. That seemed to have an impact. And Sheffield United were first to show, really, in front of goal. Billy Sharp with a, a header just a few minutes into the second period here. Yeah, I like the introduction of McGoldrick. He obviously mm. he played off them front two and he, he picked up some great uh, space to then start feeding those. And he did make the impact when he came on. Yet, like you say, it was decision-making in the final third that that actually came to nothing. Yeah, I mean, Sheffield United kept plugging away. Ben Osborne had a chance as well. Um, the opportunities were there. It's just that killer instinct, really, that final bit of quality that was in short supply, really. Yeah, on the night, I mean, the Boroughs had the two uh, chances and stuck them away, whereas Sheffield United, for all their possession and all their uh, final third play, like you say, they just mm. it's one of those nights where you could have still been playing and, and possibly would never score. And Sol Bamba seemed to be in the way of everything. There's a reason Neil brought him in tonight, and he's he's done his job to perfection, hasn't he? Yeah, it's been a it's been a typical Warnock uh, performance. Nothing that we didn't expect from him. And Sol Bamba comes in and turns out to be one of those throwing his body on the line that Neil loves to see. So he'll get all the plaudits from Neil, and probably rightly so. Morgan Gibbs White looking for another goal again. This is just after the hour mark. I think we speak about with uh, Gibbs White and Day and Sharp. There's three strikers there up top that, in these situations, they are looking to shoot. When if they had like a bit more vision and uh, started playing in and playing in their mates who are in better positions, etc. But at the end of the day, the strikers in front of goal, he's, he's got a right to shoot. Mm. Uh, and Middlesbrough are always likely to get a chance here and there, aren't they? When Sheffield United are, are trying to find a way back into the game, Robin Olsen called upon when uh, Sparrow took aim here as well. Yeah, well, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? Because you need that, that goal to get back into the game. So you're going to leave a little bit of a of the back door quite open. And, and like you said, that's never really going to trouble Olsen from there. But yeah, they're going to get those half chances. Now, a talking point in this second half, and, and we debated hmm. this, didn't we? Um, Spora involved in an altercation here with, with George Baldock. For hmm. my money, if a player goes forehead to forehead and leans in like that, it's almost certainly a red card, isn't it? Yeah, well, Baldock, credit to him, stays on his feet. Yet you've seen players who, when the head goes in like that, if, if Baldock there goes down on the ground, the ref has to make a, a, a totally different decision. Yeah. I mean, people will say, well, there's not much contact there, but the intent is there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, there's enough in that to, uh, yeah. to be uh, more than a yellow. Well, time ticked by, and, and still Sheffield United, I think, believed that I always felt that if they could get one goal, no matter when it came, they might just wobble Middlesbrough. David McGoldrick, 11 minutes from the end, thought his chance had come. Yeah, McGoldrick around. Great I mean, strike, this. Yeah, it's great technique. And like you say, you've come up against Lumley, who on the night is punched well and he's handled well. And again, it's, it's a very good save. But the technique in McGoldrick, that's what he was brought on, for, on to do. And they're the chances he'll get. Absolutely fabulous there from Joe Lumley, wasn't it? Lumley is, yeah. Like you say, uh, Borough are exactly what he needs. And uh, Warnock's found himself a decent keeper. You missed that one, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fabulous, Joe Lumley and all that. Anyway, I've like, heard it three times. Poor attempt. I've <laughs> <Come on, laughs> been trying to get it in all night. Yeah. Uh, but it's that mm. man Bamba again, isn't it? And, and he'll be the player, I think, that Neil will, will single out without a shadow of a doubt. And again, throwing his body behind shots left, right and centre. Yeah, there's nothing, like you say, there's nothing special in the defending. He's just in the right place. He makes himself big and then experience comes into play where he goes down and pretends he's got cramp when clearly he's not. Yeah, <laughs> perhaps the last... <laughs> well, I think he knew the camera was going to pan straight <laughs> to him after that, yeah. weren't they? Uh, Billy Sharp, uh, just a few minutes from the end. I think the game had gone by this point. Did you make of this one? We spoke about how you can pull Bamba out and how you can get space in behind and it's 87 minutes or so where you've just got Bamba out of his position and, and, that, and that's what you've created there. So on a, on a different night, if he'd have been able to do that more, there'd have been more joy. But ultimately, they, they've given themselves too much to do, haven't they, after that first half? 
Yeah, we, uh, at half time, didn't he? Uh, it's always going to be an uphill task, but we, you always believe, being the, being the Sheffield United, that they can get back into anything, but it just didn't materialise. And what a game now to try and bounce back in, and this will be a real marker, I think, for the manager, won't it, going to Bournemouth at the weekend? Yeah, uh, it's not out of, the, out of the question of Sheffield United going there and putting on a performance, because like, there's no easy games within the Championship, and you, you have to relish going there. I mean, there'll be two teams that will be up there at the end of the, end of the year, so it'll be another good game. Rob, thanks for your company. Yeah, thank so you, Paul. Sheffield United's little mini unbeaten run is over and they go from Teesside now to the seaside. And we hope you can join us on Saturday. The Blades off to Bournemouth. We hope to see you then. But from myself, Rob and the rest of the team, it's goodbye for now.